Here we are live, a few minutes early, so yeah. we'll wait for people to get on board. How you doing, buddy? I made it back. You made it back. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute, so everybody's good here. So we're just waiting for everyone to get on board. Wait for 10, 12, 15 people. So uh, how we doing there, Brian? Nobody yet. Everyone's waiting until it's officially 12 o'clock, I guess. So we'll uh, have to sit and do nothing and twiddle our thumbs until uh, people come on board. So. <laughs> Uh, anybody yet, Brian? Yeah. Oh, a couple people. Let us know you're out there, folks. If you're coming on board and for the Coach and Andy show, uh, put some thumbs across the screen and some happy faces or whatever emoticon you like. And that helps Facebook let other people know that we're live. So uh, that's what we need, get other people involved. So uh, today we're going to do more talk and, and less dem exercise demos, unless you guys uh, ask to see them, of course. So we're going to keep that in mind as well, a few things that I want to say, a few things we want to get across. So we're just waiting for the audience to build. So hopefully you guys are coming on board fast and furious. All right, so we're still at the same numbers, Brian, or are they just, you know, just a solid double digit? So we'll wait for that. To, most people are going to wait till they actually get the announcement at 12 o'clock that we're online. We're a little early, so any questions or comments, uh, now's the time to throw them in before we get on our own subject matter so uh, yeah, if you have any nice. have any questions or comments now would be the time to uh, write them in so Brian anything comes aboard you know what I have to say hello to Tracy Lynn she's been faithful uh, viewer from San Diego hey Tracy Lynn glad you're on board always uh, she come, I think attends most of my uh, Facebook live sessions so good to have people like that on board and folks don't forget uh, two days ago two days ago yeah, yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday, we launched the uh, Great Glutes at Home for Ladies. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention to my Facebook page, you're seeing this on YouTube. Great Glutes at Home, uh, body weight glute training circuits for ladies to be done with or without other programs. So hopefully you pick that up uh, because it's only uh, at a initial launch price for a little while and then the price will be going up. So we got lots of stuff going on there. And you got, of course, absbyandy.com. And uh, I know you've picked that up because that was, what, three weeks ago now? Yeah, probably maybe even longer. Maybe even longer. Yeah. Wow, so long to shoot weeks. and then yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, no, time flies. So. So. Yeah. And uh, what's our numbers like, Brian? The numbers? numbers are good. People from Austin, Texas, Iowa. Good. Angie from Australia. Awesome. All right, awesome. All right, let's get at, let's get at it then. So we had a few things, points of uh, contention and things to talk about this week. One of the things that I wanted to mention, we uh, ended my uh, breakfast with the coach session on Sunday. Someone was asking me to talk about hypervitaminosis. I've written several articles on hypervitaminosis, the dangers of taking uh, a lot of um, supplements and yeah. vitamins. This, even, a, even a one a day, if people are so prone, can build up in your system over time and cause more trouble than they prevent. And lo and behold, I'm watching headline news uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and a new study shows people are taking way too much vitamin D and uh, are suffering vitamin D hypervitaminosis from it, and that can be real nasty. You start getting yeah. kidney stones and constant nausea and things like that. So here we go again, people in cold climates, ooh, you better take vitamin D, ooh, yeah, that's you know, thing, more yeah. is better. All the fitness experts and PhDs jump online and take your vitamin D, and if you're taking a multivitamin and an extra vitamin D, guess what? Builds up, builds up, and now a study saying North Americans are taking way too much vitamin D and becoming ill because of it. So look that up online, little tidbits that are coming out. Again, the fitness industry thinks it knows better, and more often than not, it doesn't. So I prefer important. to get my vitamin D outside this time of year. Yeah, yeah. Lately, so. yeah I was sitting on the deck. <laughs> you were sitting on the deck. It's all good. So any questions or comments yet, Brian? No? People hearing us about vitamin D <clears throat> and supplements, check it out online. You know, that's why my opinion is even at my age, you really, if you follow a healthy lifestyle, there's really no need for supplementation no. at all. So keep that in mind. There's more danger involved to supplementing than there is health benefits, unless you've got a diagnosed reason to be doing that. And I, by that, I mean actually diagnosed not in your head I read online all right that's googled not a, that's not a diagnosis yeah I googled it is not a diagnosis it's okay. research I googled it right? yeah so <laughs> keep that in mind I can refer you to plenty of books I've used as sources um, through the years for talking about the non-necessity of supplements 
kind of keep that in mind and move around. So what we wanted to sort of address today a couple times, we talked about Andy was away last week in Las Vegas at a photo shoot. Uh, that's what goes on when you look like this. So, but it was funny because when he got back, we started talking about the sort of stale old myths that are still out there in the fitness industry, the kind of questions that Andy was getting before, during, and after his trip to Vegas, which was uh, pretty comical, both, um, well, from people that you just ran into and sat beside on flights, like yeah. young, hungry people who are, who are buying in the internet crap. We can talk about that, but basically people in the fitness industry who should know better Right, and didn't it start before you even flew out? Weren't the, did, what was the first question about your fluids? Oh yeah, they were they were nervous about me flying um, in, ca in case the flight would, would cause me to hold water. Yeah, so um, and they were asking what you're <laughs> going to do about that. Yeah, yeah. If I had some, you know, magic secret or, or something, I was going to you know to counteract that. So Ooh, obviously it wasn't a problem. So he's flying in a plane. <laughs> he's going to hold water and ruin our photo shoot. And yeah. they, they were these are people who do photo shoots for a living yeah. and fly people around for a living. So you think they would know better, but the industry being what it is, they were asking Andy, "What's he going to do to control his water uh, for the photo shoot?" And I think your line through the whole weekend was, "I'm going to show up." Yeah, I just I just show up. Yeah, <laughs> just tell me where to be, and I show up. So. So that was pretty funny, and, and I've heard that stuff all through my career as well, like just people trying to make mountains out of molehills oh, and trying to create like, rocket science. When you're ready, you're ready, right? Like you're lean, you're lean. You don't need to, to you know, do anything to, to prepare. Basically, you just keep and doing what you're doing. Here they were so concerned about Andy's photo shoot. You know, oh no, he's going to ruin the photo shoot if he doesn't control his water, and what's the magic, and what's Scott got you doing, or whatever. Um, meanwhile, at the photo shoot, 115 degrees outside. Yeah, in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, that was. I, I've never so felt heat like that before. Though. 46, 47 for people who are uh, in the Celsius world. That's so what was like, that like? It was. It was like a. I've never been inside a convection oven before, but um, I'm Hopefully. sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's that's probably what it would feel like. It'd be like a turkey roasting inside. An so oven. you were saying even a couple of the cameras melted down. Yeah, they they were they were yeah uh, basically overheating much like a. You know, laptop or a smartphone one you could hear the fan just you know working overtime trying to cool it down so they're putting the they're giving the camera a rest and getting out another camera but not you guys you just stood out there in no. 100, 115 degree heat yeah pretty much yeah did yeah, they yeah. they provide the uh, fluids for you and stuff like that yeah yeah we have water so i mean that i obviously I, I never you know cut water or anything like that anyway so i was just drinking as normal so um probably more so in, in that heat because it was of course it was going Stay hydrated when yeah, it's hot. That's a simple common sense rule. Yeah. Looks like there's a question or a comment, Brian. Well, you guys can figure this out. Certain foods affect you cosmetically. Sure. Maybe you can elaborate uh, uh, more so if it fits your macros mantra. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let's uh, promise we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've addressed if it fits your macros a gazillion times. We're not fans. No. But, um, <laughs> let's, let's just say long and short of it is 150 calories from asparagus nice. carrots apples or banana is going to be a lot more cosmetically friendly than 150 calories from a snickers bar yeah. all right this isn't rocket science or from m m's so you know yeah I, i've gone places where people have actually like portioned out captain crunch and they were eating captain crunch as as part of fitting their macros yeah. yeah and i was like this is this yeah is ridiculous. that's so, going to give you abs yeah so one of the other things that uh you ran into, of course, from people who should know better. These are all fitness people, right? Yeah. So uh, didn't the cameraman sit you down and wanted to know how you prepared? For yeah, the he, shoot? he was just curious as, as uh, uh, to what I normally do for photo shoots because uh, we, we've worked before in the past. So um, and so I, I basically said I just show up. So <laughs> was he curious what that meant? Yeah, I, I just I, I told him about the cycle diet and uh, you know told him how long I've been on it. Um, and he he kind of went into a story about someone that uh, yeah tell him that story about from a previous why, photo why shoot. he asked the question yeah, what they, do you do to prepare because Andy shows up prepared he's not tired he's not dragging his feet well the reason a photographer asked a question like this is because yeah they, they had a, a photo shoot probably a few weeks before where the guy showed up and he was just you know dragging his ass he was and he told him he was only eating 18 grams of carbohydrates per day and 
they were only coming from like broccoli. Right. <laughs> and so and the I result mean, was yeah, he no was, energy. Yeah, just you know, a, a lifeless being basically, just a zombie. So, um, not to mention, that I'm not sure what your physique would look like. Probably be pretty flat, I would imagine. So. Yeah, and then you're trying to look happy for a photo shoot. It affects yeah. everything. It affects the cameraman. It affects the environment yeah. to try to get you up and smiling. It affects the kind of weight you're lifting. I, I've been to many photo shoots like that, especially among ladies who cut their cards like yeah, suddenly to zero, and then they they're you know like, how long is this going to go on? That's not the attitude they want at a photo shoot, right? No, 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 so, no. no. You but want to be upbeat. And so here you go. They're like asking Andy like. Well, how did you get ready for your photo shoot? Because the only experience they have with people showing up for photo shoots is because they've done a thousand things to get there that's left them not like Andy. So yeah, um, yeah, just, I just yeah, really just show up. Just yeah. you know, you, they ask you stuff about sodium and carbs and yeah, yeah. I mean, those are definitely the the usual questions you get just about <laughs> sodium loading and sodium depleting and for a photo shoot wow. and uh, drying out uh, with water like cutting water and um, you know just uh, basically just just stuff that is, is unnecessary when, when you do things properly basically when you're in shape all the time you don't peak a peak uh, yeah. and that's the, the <laughs> cycle diet is how you get in shape all the time and, and never taking shortcuts is how you get in shape all the time and that's why you get invitations to photo shoots let's get Andy he's probably in shape yeah you know, not like, oh, let me lose, lose 30 pounds yeah, and, me, and I'll get back to me in three months. <laughs> so very, very important there. Yeah. Questions or comments? All right. Are you, are you guys hearing what we're saying here? Like even in fitness, pe people that are in the fitness industry still don't get it. That you can look like this year round and you can show up. You can follow a specific cycle diet lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Take the edge <laughs> off. Not have to do drastic, drastic measures just to be misrepresent yourself yeah. under a camera it's right? still living an, an athlete's lifestyle so i mean being an athlete to me has nothing to do with starving yourself and walking on a treadmill like that that's not athletic that that's not healthy that has nothing to do with a sound sustainable lifestyle so there you go um you know for some reason bodybuilding got yeah put into i don't know some funky category of <laughs> like it, it's not what it used to be, basically. Yeah, and that, that staying lean is somehow this, like, once a year kind of proposition, right? If you're yeah. in the fitness industry, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can only look like this for a short yeah, amount of time. Before well, and after a show or whatever. Yeah. Like, it's just, so it was crazy the kind of questions you were getting from people who should know better. And then didn't they uh, take you out for dinner or whatever? What was that like? Yeah, it was good. We just we, uh, we went to the steakhouse. And, uh, I mean, there's tons of restaurants in Vegas, right? So there was tons to choose from. But... Um, I, I'm pretty, pretty married to the cycle diet, so I, I, I don't go off diet, you know, midweek for, you know, anybody. That's a schedule. So. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. I've just, I've, I've been doing it so long. Um, I just, you know, I, I wait till Sunday. So, we went out to, uh, to the steakhouse, and uh, you know, you can eat if, if you want to eat uh, healthy, you can there. I mean, you can pretty much request anything, yeah. and they'll make it for you. And that's what I did. So. There you go. And then you come back looking like this. It's like, oh, now I need to eat. The photo shoot's over. You just, yeah, you, just you showed up there following your lifestyle, and you come back and you follow your lifestyle. Yeah, because yeah, we went out uh, Sunday afternoon for a meal, as, as yeah. per usual, and, yeah. you know, didn't skip a beat, right? So. so I wish people could just get that through their heads. Here's Andy scheduled for a photo shoot, right? They fly him into Vegas, and even they have questions about, oh, how did you get ready? Oh, you look so good. Uh, what did you do? Like, what did you do with your sodium? What did you do with your water? What did you do with your carbs? And, was, and he's like, nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, nothing. And, uh, oh, nothing. So, and Andy's uh, go-to line was, I just show up. So that's what the lifestyle is. Yeah. If you choose to make the sacrifices to live it, that's the important thing. So now well, we'll take your questions and comments. Yes. Uh... Here's an interesting uh, comment or question. How has maintaining the cycle diet lifestyle affected your relationships? For example, social events, celebrations, others' perceptions and views, others' insecurities, etc. Wow, I could speak to the others' insecurities all day long just in the fitness lifestyle, let alone the cycle diet. Do you want to get to that first or do you want me to? You, yeah, go, ahead. Yeah. No, you go ahead. Because um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a, probably the best question we've ever had. Yeah, no, I... Uh, Definitely, I, I, absolutely. Um, I find with most people, most people end up feeling 
sorry for me in social situations sometimes they're like oh don't don't you want something I'll, no like it you know I'm, I'm fine this is you know this is how I live my life this is what I do don't I brought my own food for a reason you know I, I've gone to many um, you know family and, and social functions where I've actually brought my own meals just because yeah. you know that's that's what I do I'm not I'm not yeah. having what they're eating and uh, I'm, I'm fine good. with that but the, I always find that other people are you know they're they're more they're more uh, Empathetic. Interested in it than than I am, right? Like I, I don't think it's a big deal, but they they're just, you know, it's it's like they want to, you know, center me out almost. Like, <laughs> see, the the thing is, the person that asked the question, once it becomes a lifestyle, you don't really look at it as sacrifice anymore. No, no, no. I unless you have other people in your life who don't support it, then mm. things. I mean, I have a lot of clients like that whose spouses or family members don't support their efforts to yeah. for physique transformation or to better themselves. And it makes it very, very hard or intention at home and things like that. Back in the day when I looked something like this, when I was doing photo shoots and stuff, yeah, relationship-wise, you have to be with someone who... And I never wanted to be with someone who was in the industry. That didn't appeal to me at yeah, all. Yeah. But someone outside the industry has to be able to understand yeah. what that's like. You're going to get a lot of attention, sort of a lot of attention from the opposite sex, of course. Um, you're getting a lot of attention, for instance, from uh, both genders, as you've told me. So, comfortably and uncomfortably. Yeah, yeah. So, that, that happens, um, you know, and that's not the cycle diet, but part of the, you know, the relationship thing, <coughs> definitely a big thing for me in the past. I don't know about you, we've never really discussed it, but yeah, some people who just couldn't handle the amount of yeah. attention of, hey, there's Scott Abel, or, you know, can I get a picture with you? And, you know, it would bother them that they were, you know, invisible kind of thing, yeah. which I can't control and you can't control. No, no, no. Else that's come up and talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> you really absolutely. can't control that. But um, cycle diet wise, this is one of those things you got to decide. Are you going to live your life for other people? Um, are yeah. you going to live your life for other people? Or are you going to follow a path that makes sense to you? There's so many people don't have a line in the sand. They mm -hmm. keep rubbing it out. Oh, well, so and so is visiting me this week, so. I went off my diet for three days. I have family in town, so I didn't do, as you're saying, and, and, and I lived for the decades. That doesn't change a thing for us. Nah. We take our food with us. We take them out for dinner. We do whatever. But Yeah, know, no, I, I just make it work, basically. I just yeah. figure it out. We can so. only control what we can control. How other yeah. people respond to that, uh, it's really... No, yeah. not my business. Not a, you know. No, I, I definitely like I you just, said. Other fact, people would be like, "Well, I wouldn't want to live like that." And that's fine. But yeah. you know, we want to look the way we want to look. So, so no, no, yeah, no I, I, I definitely had it affect friendships and and uh, um, relationships too, where they just they you know they they can't handle the routine basically. So yeah, um, yeah, you know, yeah. It's a choice, but that you know what you find out as you go through life, as you get older and older. Those kind of things become more and more obvious. You're going to separate from friends and people who live different <coughs> lifestyles anyway. Different jobs, different people move, whatever. Um, so having you know, someone who understands your passion, your lifestyle, your way of being, that becomes very important, but you, know, you don't alter those things for the sake no. of someone else. Oh, well, no. I can't imagine anyone coming to my life saying, well, I don't want you to live that way anymore. Well, bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so... Maybe that's why I'm alone. <coughs> <laughs> but no, I, I wouldn't, uh, I think that's grandiose of anybody to make those kind of um, assertions at someone else. If, if, and it's usually because other people haven't found their passion. Right? Oh, I, so they're like, absolutely. Well, I don't want you doing that anymore. Well, okay, well, what is it you're doing that I'm standing in the way of? You know, yeah. nothing. So uh, that was a fantastic question. I hope oh, we answered awesome. it. Yeah, I thought it was. It was a great question. But yeah. yes, of course, a certain... And that, this isn't just limited to fitness and diet. If you live a specific lifestyle, let's say you're in politics, that just popped into my head or whatever, or let's say you're a longshoreman, um, weird kind of occupations or vocations, um, that demands someone being able to adopt to that kind of lifestyle in order to be around it. You're going to be away for this many weeks at yeah. a time, or you're not going to be available for you know it takes someone to be able to empathize and, and relate to that and go that's okay with me oh um, absolutely so, and i wouldn't want to be with anyone who would have it any other yeah. way what a great question holy yeah. crap we could do podcasts on this and absolutely you know, everything that was a fantastic question i think it, it, as as i've gotten older too i think i've become more comfortable with with myself and, and who i am so um you know maybe when i first started uh you know i wasn't sure but you know the whole 
I, I wanted to live the fitness lifestyle, but you're still Didn't kinda, know where you're lying in the yeah, sand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now, I mean, this is me. I, I know who I am. So yeah. I, I know where that line is now and um, be, because I enjoy this so much, right? So, I mean, I enjoy living this. It's, the cycle diet doesn't seem, you know, like, like work or... or it's, yeah, and it's not intrusive to other <coughs> no, people. No, no, so, no. So, yeah, I just... Yeah, I, I don't get that. It's yeah, it would be like someone saying, I don't want you to work out anymore, or someone saying, I don't want you to take your medication anymore. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't. Yeah, it'd be like someone making you smoke, even though you don't smoke. <laughs> yeah. Here, have a cigarette. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Very good point. So, uh, point of direction. Cameraman wants us, wants him. Look at the camera. Well, I like the. Okay. I got a system working. He's got, he's got a system working. <laughs> All right. Comments People want to hear from you, Andy. Comments or questions? <laughs> uh, is it practical for somebody wanting to put on size to be on the cycle diet, or do did you or you're supposed to do what you did with Andy, bulk them up and then transition them into it? There's no supposed to. There's only an individual application, right? Yeah. For Andy being as tall as he is, as lanky as he is, it was pretty obvious right from the beginning he would need to bulk up. I mean, it was just a pretty much a no-brainer yeah, yeah, no, doing sure. his assessment, right? Could he have got there the other way? I'm not so sure. I think in your case it was pretty cut and dry. Other people I think it, it's optional, right? But um, that requires individual assessment. I know once I started the cycle diet, I stayed in shape and got bigger for over a decade. Um, you know, from when I first started the cycle mm -hmm. diet when it didn't even have a name back at Muscle Camp in 89, all the way through to the near the end of my career back in 97, 98, when I was like 260 pounds and, and abs and all the rest of it in 2004 when I retired. So I was always uh, getting denser, thicker, yeah, more I, muscular. I definitely made improvements in my physique in the yeah. last 10 years. Yeah, I, I mean, and yeah, because you've been on it that long. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, there's, it's not an either-or situation to whoever asked. Um, read the people's names when you read when you read their comments, Brian, so I know who I'm addressing. But... Uh, it's not an either or thing. Oftentimes, it could be it could be both. It's just what's better. And we've discussed this in the past, uh, especially on podcasts. How many people, when they're dieting, they love the notion of bulking up, and then yeah. two or three months into it, I need to go back to my diet. So, right. let alone eighteen months. Was it eighteen months you were bulked up? Pretty yeah. Uh, you were maybe even more. Uh, you were rolling forward. What a bully! Yeah. yeah. So. Um, but but I lived in the moment. I, I embrace it. I, too many people, yeah, if they're bulking up. They're talking about dieting. They're dieting. They're yeah. talking about bulking yeah. up, right? And it's just so bulking up is not, you know, it sounds it, so appealing. It right? has <coughs> its purpose. I think once you have a certain level of muscle maturity, too, it's just yeah. Then yeah, then you're just you're just getting getting fat. You're though, just getting so, fat. Yeah. You know. It's not about just the scale changing. That's a big important thing as well. So. Yeah. That's an important thing to keep in mind. So uh, that's a another great question. Good comment. Uh, hopefully, whoever asked that, um, the cycle dot diet, you've taken the course and looked at it, and it goes into those kind of things as well. So, yeah. Anything else, Brian? Yeah, Tina has checked in. Hey, Tina. She'd be interested if you coaches could tell us more about cosmetic effect with different foods. You have mentioned it shortly several times. Like, is it bad taking your carbs from pasta and flowers? Yes. Yes. Well, no, let's not use the word bad. I, I don't like the word the good and bad. Hydrophilic is, is, is the technical term. Yes. Um, <laughs> dry carbs. Yeah. <laughs> so let, joke. Let, let's <laughs> talk about the, the cosmetically most advantageous foods, all right, which are your staples that most bodybuilders eat, right? So lean protein. Skinless chicken breast, skinless turkey breast, egg whites. egg whites, all the core tuna packed in water. Doesn't get much better than that, all yeah. right? Uh, from there, uh, flank steak, lean <coughs> hip steak, inside round steak, um, and the higher cuts, all right, right. For, for proteins. Uh, what am I leaving out? Cosmetically friendly, if you want to get on the higher, fattier side, natural stuff, um, roasted unsalted nuts, um, and then carbohydrates, uh, Potatoes and yams, your tubers are the highest on the list yeah, for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Tubers meaning uh, yams, sweet potatoes, and potatoes. Um, and then right underneath that would be um, brown rice and then regular oats. long grain rice. Oats, of course. Sorry, I left that out. I'd call that a tie. So yeah. uh, oats, oat bran, oatmeal, grits, uh, cream of wheat, all that, all good. Uh, any kind of fibrous veggie, so forget about all the modern nonsense of nightshade vegetables and and 
glycemic index of carrots and that all the rest of the nonsense. Yeah, so I'm I don't eat carrots, but it's not because of the glycemic index. It just yeah, yeah no no I gag. Yeah, no, but, that's a good reason. <laughs> and you like carrots, so any kind of fibrous veggie is going to be pretty much cosmetically friendly. So that's uh, that's a good thing to consider. Uh, what's out is the things that uh, she mentioned herself. So uh, flour, flour-based products uh, gone. Pasta gone. Um, any anything that creates a hydrophilic environment, which means uh, it creates more water and digestion than it uses, you're likely going to have a film of water, even if you're lean. Uh, that kind of thing. And then of course the right food bolus. Like uh, and by that we mean what size portions are you eating? meal per meal. How close are your meals together? You can't eat meals uh, inside of two hours apart. Two and a half hours actually, but uh, if, you're, yeah, doing, if you're doing that, then no matter how cosmetically friendly it is, you're introducing too much to the gut uh, too mm -hmm. quickly. So, and that's going to create water osmotic effects, okay? So there's those things to consider as well. That was another good question. Smart people. Yeah, big time. Yeah. That's why bodybuilders eat a certain way. I mean, yes, yeah, that's, yeah. There's no bodybuilder that ever got ready for a show eating Captain Crunch and and, and Wendy's. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a reason. There's a lot of sacrifice in that. Uh, so and they and eat going the most. back to if it, if it fits your macros, right? That's why. Yeah. That's why it doesn't work because there's so many un you know cosmetically unfriendly foods that. Yeah, saying anything's allowed as long as it fits your macros. Is, calories a calorie is not true right so yeah it's not true on so many yeah. levels especially the way it lights up the reward centers of the brain and your internal health too i mean not not just to mention cosmetic like yeah. you know eating you know captain crunch on a regular basis uh, yeah. that's not doing your pancreas any favors or yeah <laughs> uh, the whole biochemical hormonal yeah. reactions inside the body matter so uh, great yeah so hopefully we answered that question and that should take care of the if it fits your macros uh, question as well Boy, these things, uh, they're so popular for no real good reason, but uh, that's thats the fitness industry. We just discussed that kind of thing with J.C. Santana, actually, who was just, we just got done a podcast before we came live and sort of discussing the same thing and all these <coughs> vogue trends that really don't accomplish yeah. anything other than being trendy and different. It's always and the basics. Consumers it's love it. So yeah. anyway, what else, Brian? Hey, Andy, uh, Bronco wants to know when you cook your meals for the week. Uh, well, I'm lucky. I, I work from home, so I, I don't really have like a a day where I really oh. cook everything up. So I might just pick like a maybe a time during the week where I I, I cook you know all, all my uh, all my chicken or turkey. Um, that, that's really all I make beforehand is is, is my meat. Oh, everything, you doing else, everything else as you're doing. Yeah, it? pretty Except much. Except for when so. you bring food here. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll make that beforehand if, if I'm traveling or something or. If I know I'm coming over here, I'll, I'll you know pre-make a meal and bring it over. But I don't really spend a whole lot of time uh, meal prepping. I, I'm lucky that way. Where well, I may, I, I've done that in the past, where maybe I've spent uh, you know half a Sunday or something, where I've just I've made a lot of you know food in bulk, so it's ready to go for the week. But um, yeah, preparation. I, I would say whatever best suits your schedule. Just um, you know, the more prepared you are. The better and, you're going to stick to your diet. But so. you also have food that's easy to prepare. To yeah, to I'm prepare. not spending, not you know, like, yeah. an hour making not a meal. Not an hour meal, yeah. No, no, no. It's, and, uh, yeah, like I egg, think egg whites, I mean, that takes no time to cook. Even those, I, you know, so I'm the opposite of Andy, if anyone cares. Um, the question was directed at Andy, but in a previous video that I did upstairs, what day of the week I cook all my meals, depends on what day of the week my housekeeper cooks, because yeah. she cooks my meals. So, uh, but she'll do four or five days of egg whites yeah. in advance and then oatmeal for the freezer oatmeal for the fridge yada 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 actually so. i, I pre-make my breakfast every night before bed so when get i get up, up in the morning i just pop it in the microwave and that's ready to go so I, I do that every day but you know good stuff yeah good what else brian what else we got uh andrea wants to know how someone approaches the cycle diet when they're traveling overseas when they have uh uh no compensation when they get into a sub -comp compensation mode and they have no kitchen to cook their foods do they take a diet break or do they just choose healthier other alternatives i i would just figure it out if, if i wanted to stick to i mean it really depends on the situation um you know if i was going on vacation i would probably just take time off the diet like that would be planned uh, 
ahead of time though but I, if i was planning on staying on my diet i would just i would figure it out i would just live in the moment make the best choices i could um you know these in days the moment, it, it's pretty easy i mean yeah we've discussed this with you we've discussed it with trevor we've discussed it with other people these days travel really isn't an excuse to break a, a diet strategy it really isn't there's mm -hmm. workarounds okay you can't have the exact same food the exact same way yeah but, yeah i mean it doesn't take an einstein to figure out that you know uh if you can't have your tuna asparagus and rice then you know, if you can get fresh fruit or go to a grocery store instead of a restaurant and get a prepared salad and go down the salad dressing aisle and buy some calorie-wise dressing and yeah. throw some throw some pine nuts and pumpkin seeds on it, you're probably doing better than, you know, going to a restaurant and having a burger yeah. and fries and using the reason to do that is I'm traveling. So yeah. it's really not, really not that big a deal. Um, it's like getting a cup of coffee. Basically, I, I don't know. I, it's not that it's, hard. It's, it's, <laughs> Even uh, at Starbucks, you can get healthy meals well, now. So. No, for sure. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's pretty, I mean, it, we do live in a world of food abundance, so um, that, Just, that includes healthier options too. It's not all. Yeah, yeah. The advice I would give is simplify, simplify, simplify. Yeah. If you tell yourself it's complicated, that's what you're going to experience. <laughs> all right? If you tell yourself this really isn't that difficult, then that's probably Absolutely. what you'll experience. So. Yeah. Uh, even when I've been traveling lately, even airports now have healthy food that you can take on the plane yep. at the various airports. Like, oh, it's a airport meal site or whatever. Yeah, I saw lots of that, but I yeah. don't want to get into that too deep because we're going to talk yeah, about we'll it. Yeah, we'll podcast about yeah. it in a future episode, but yeah. hopefully that answers uh, Andreas's question. So, comments and questions? No. There's everybody all, everybody's all done already. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we just wanted to conversate today. We didn't want to do any... Uh, any exercise demos unless you guys had something specific you wanted to see that wasn't too hard to do but hopefully you saw yesterday's post with the high angle concentration curl that came out really well so that was really good yeah, and, so, uh, that was yeah. good. so uh, all in all you went to Vegas you came back from Vegas nothing really changed no no I, I mean this time last week I was sitting at the Vegas airport watching Watching this episode yeah, with Krista. Yeah, so that's right. Time I forgot about that. Week, yeah, week goes by like that. So, yeah, yeah I mean, obviously, yeah, <coughs> went there, did the shoot, came back, stayed on the cycle diet the whole time. I mean, didn't yeah. skip a beat. So, yeah, it's. Uh, and that's I mean, why you're available for photo shoots yeah. when other guys aren't, right? Oh, well, call me in three months when I lose <laughs> 15 pounds. So, uh, and I was the same way during my, my career. If they wanted yeah. a photo shoot or a guest poser. Uh, which I was known for. They all they knew they had to contact me and let's get Scott Abel. He's always ready. Yep. So I guess what I got a lot of gigs. So it was about living the lifestyle, um, which yeah. we love. So I mean, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's I not a sacrifice. Yeah. Like it's, it's not a sacrifice. No. It's not. This isn't a hard thing to do, and we enjoy our refeeds. I don't get to enjoy as much as you anymore because of my age. Because uh, wow, we we went out. Okay, so we went out. Here's a day in the life of the cycle diet. So you obviously ate before I even saw you. Then we went out to Montana's and had ribs and appetizers and french fries and you had the dessert too. You had the mile high mile pie. Mile high mud pie, yeah. And then after that you dropped me off at home but then you went to Five Guy Burgers. Yeah, so I had a double bacon cheeseburger, large fries, which if anyone's really ever been to Five fries. Guys, they're large plus they fill like half the bag up. And then you went and got a dozen donuts from Tim Hortons because I wanted to try the Dutchies. So I got three Dutchies in that dozen. and. And uh, they they were really fresh though, so. And you weren't even done then, cream. were you? No, I had ice cream. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember those days of having a revving metabolism like that, but that was a long time ago. Uh, so yeah, that's a day in the life of the cycle diet. So that's why we enjoy it so much. It's fun. Oh, it is fun. Yeah, like eating a dozen donuts is fun. Yeah, like it, it, it's a good time. Yeah, fat guy burgers when you haven't had any for yeah. you know, and you just came Absolutely. from a steakhouse. Uh, fun. So, uh, yeah, and uh, again, back to that question on relationships and how other people, yeah, that's sometimes a lot of people aren't going to understand that, that you're going to choose a day and this day oh, yeah, revolves, revolves around food. I'm going to, you know, the, hey, why don't you be part of that? So You should see the looks I get when I, when I tell people that, you know, what I eat that are on, you know, the outside. They look at me like I'm... Yeah, I used to get just, just, in, so. just in grocery stores. <laughs> when I go grocery shopping and it's for cheat day or football season's coming up and I'm stocked in the cupboards and be like... And, and someone checking out or someone who's in front of me or behind me will be yeah, like, yeah. you don't really eat that stuff, do you? 
No, I decided oh, yeah. to just put all this on the countertop to screw with your heads. Yeah. Uh, of course, I ate it. So a hundred dollars worth of food. To yeah, just to, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, amazing to you know the kind of comments and and questions and stuff you endure. But uh, it does go back to that lifestyle thing that yeah, not everyone is going to be able to uh, want to no, adopt no. to yeah. that lifestyle. Yeah. I don't want. I, I don't want to live like this. I want to go for dinner whenever the hell I want to go for dinner. That's fine. You can do Just that. Just don't complain that you don't look the way you want yeah, to look. Yeah, oh, help me lose 10, 10 pounds. Well, okay, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. there you go. So yeah. that, that, that says a lot about it, too. What else we got, Brian? You guys were talking a little bit about uh, the exercise part of what you do. Tracy was wondering what your thoughts are on side lunges or anything with a cross over to the side. It's okay. I mean, there's no magic exercises, right? I've said that in a million in a million episodes, um, the magic is in the method. So yep. it depends how and why they fit into a workout, and then that depends on how and why that workout fits into a program. Yeah. So uh, that's very, very important stuff. I like to do um, more of the side stuff, you know, when we warm up, when for sure. Warm up, you know, that's, <coughs> reach I mean, that, that's body weight, but I mean, it's still sure. it's still a good way to, to warm up. Yeah, it's moving around. the general warm up, so. Sure, yeah. And you can find the uh, warm-up sequence on my YouTube channel uh, or at skyablefitness.com. Probably slash warm-up. It's probably in there somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, so viable. It just depends how it's used and, and when it's used. No magic exercises. The magic is in the method. So yeah. keep that in mind. What else, Brian? Uh, Andy, Louie wants to know, uh, do you train your traps with any kind of shrug in your workout routine? Uh, not really a whole lot. Like, Sometimes I'll do like a little uh, little circuit. I think we was it last time I was on here. I, I think we did a demo of uh, the high horizontal high with angle uh, um, lateral raises, didn't we? And then the, yeah, we did horizontal with vertical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I mean, pretty much any any raise exercise, lateral raise, front raises. There, there's always a bit of a shrug involved, so that that's going to uh, engage your traps. But as far as actual shrugging goes, I I, I do. Um, like doing them at, at at the end of a shoulder workout, just because I do like how it how it feels, um, how it stretches out your whole sh uh, shoulder girdle area. So, yeah. but as, as far as trap development goes, I mean, I I think they're an overrated exercise for traps. I do put them in some of your programs. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the programming, but yeah, they're just more of a uh, I don't know an ego exercise, I guess. I, a lot of the times. Well, if you're a strength athlete. Essentially yeah, like I, I see time. some people doing shrugs at the gym, and I mean they're just loading up plates, and it's just way too much weight, right? Yeah. You know, there's little shrugging going on. It's just more you know, rocking back and forth. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, good question. Hopefully that uh, hopefully that answered that question as well. Future episodes, we will. Uh, when you see that we're scheduling Facebook Live, that means that you should probably prepare some comments or questions that you want answered. So. We're not always going to do exercise demos because we can film those and shoot those anytime. So here we want to troubleshoot maybe what your own problems are or, or our outlook or, you know, the innervation training method, cycle diet, which we did today, any of those things. But talking about Andy's uh, trip to Vegas and back, you know, your own life is always sort of a, a vehicle for understanding and explaining and lecturing. So... What we wanted to get across this time was just how many questions you were getting from people actually in the <coughs> fitness industry um, who should know better. Like, no. oh, well, you know, how did you prepare for the photo shoot? Like, do what I always do. You know, you know, what did you know? What did you do about your water so you wouldn't hold water on the plane? I didn't do anything about it. You know, no. I knew I wouldn't hold water because. I'm in shape. No, no, you know, sure. all these things that people should know better, but they always want to resort to the magic hey, between us. What was the magic trick? Like, yeah. you know, like the magic trick is there is no magic trick. There is no it's rabbit in the hat. Lifestyle, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. people continue to to want to search for the sexy over the proven, tried and proven. You know, so uh, new and improved. <laughs> yeah. Is sometimes no. an oversell. And so that's very. You know, if you're interested in a lean athletic physique I, I i don't understand why it's such a conflict of interest to to live a way that's that conducive yeah. to it i just i, I don't get that part yeah. of it like people say they want to look a certain way but yeah it, but that's a conflict of interest to how they really yeah, tell me what fat burner to take yeah yeah yeah, that's yeah. A good uh we offline brian something no no it's uh 
Well, to keep things going, um, Andrea was inter interested to know, Scott, what the likes of Arnold, Bill Pearl, Dave Draper, and a few legends you knew back in the days diet like. Was it similar to the cycle diet today? Well, I never knew Dave Draper. He was way before my time. Um, well, no, a cycle diet was something I invented, really. I mean, back then, when I started, if guys had cheat days, they felt guilty about it. Yeah. Um, or they just had off-season, like you would see Arnold off-season, Arnold dieting. Like, that's just how bodybuilding yeah. was back then. Nobody sort of cycled refeeds like the cycle diet did, but... Uh, they ate healthy, and of course... Yeah, it was probably easier to eat healthy back then, just because, I mean, there was no such thing as fast food. I mean, going way back, I mean, yeah. options were... Yeah, and, and they, just, different. they just lived a healthier lifestyle. I mean, yeah. they just they just did. And Bill Pearl became a vegetarian, so when I would go out for, you know, last time I went out for dinner with Bill Pearl, 2005, um, you know, he was a vegetarian, so we had to go to a place that accommodated that, so... Uh, but it's one of those things, um, back probably. in the day, there was no uniform thing. Yeah, and it's, it's each, probably more in, in eight. Like they just yeah, kind of each used. eight according almost culturally, right? Arnold being from Austria, there would be a heavy European influence. And Bill Pearl being from California, there would be a heavy, um, well, not from California, but living in California, would be a heavy, you know, influence of that. So, you know, there was all those individual factors to factor in and, and stuff like that, too. So I wouldn't say there was predominantly you know, a way they all did things that was common, um, especially once they retire. I mean, it's different when, even for me, once you retire, another door opens to a wider room. You're, you're suddenly not facing narrow choices anymore. You're yeah. like, you wouldn't have told me back in the day that two of my meals would be, uh, you know, roasted almonds and then the next one roasted cashews. Like, I just wouldn't know. That wouldn't happen as I was in you know, full bloom. Uh, not that they're not cosmetically friendly, but it wouldn't wouldn't be something I would think of as a whole protein and, you know, leading to size, shape, strength, power, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So that kind of thing. Um, really, uh, once these guys retired, uh, they definitely ate differently. So uh, that's something important to keep in mind. What's the matter, Brian? Nothing. Okay. Uh, any comments, questions? Uh, Louie wants to know what your thoughts are on dairy products, especially milk. Not very cosmetically friendly. No, no. Um, <laughs> probably the... Uh, if, if you're going to eat any dairy, probably cottage cheese is probably... Well, eat is the key word. Yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to drink your calories. calories right? Yeah, right? So. so you don't eat milk. Um, so that's important. Cottage cheese, big fan. Um, yeah. More for health, variety, satiety, things like that. Yeah. You can't just think purely in terms of, co oh, um, they, they said these are the cosmetic foods, I'm only going to eat them the rest yeah. of my life. Well, that's not going to work. So what's healthy, you know, and yogurt, some people love yogurt. <coughs> yeah, I can take it or leave it. It's just these days, real real yogurt that's healthy is... Yeah, no, for sure. Most it's, of it's junk food. Yogurt's becoming more of a, like a dessert, almost. Yeah. You, you lock down yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the dairy aisle, and it's just, wow. Yeah, vanilla honey and cappuccino yogurt and yeah i mean hopefully healthy people know better than that yeah. um but yeah cottage cheese one percent i eat every night before bed so uh, that's about the best choice of course but uh, yeah, yeah and I, don't I don't drink your it. don't drink your calories even from dairy but dairy is definitely not cosmetically friendly you're not yeah. going to see a whole lot of uh people who got ripped eating cottage cheese yogurt <laughs> drinking milk yeah yeah Certainly yeah, not. Not, not going to happen. Not in abundance, no. Yeah, not, not if that was the, the staples of your diet. Like what Arnold said, no milk. No milk is for babies. No milk is for babies, I drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> so, reference yeah, to comment. even knew that back in, back in the 70s, too, right? Yeah. So, that, that was that whole innate uh, yeah. you know, trial well, and error. Back right? in so the 70s, <laughs> milk was the bulk of protein. Yeah, right? yeah. So, I, I remember yeah. Bill Pearl saying, well, reading, uh, he said people used to drink milk right in the gym. They'd have, like, you know, yeah. Two liters of milk, and they'd be drinking it while they while they work out. So. Imagine what that gym smelled like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've lived through some of that. Uh, back in okay, so when I first started, here's a story from the ages that I remember. Um, I would get hot chocolate mix, whole milk, and put five whole eggs in it because I saw Rocky. Yeah, yeah. Mix it in a blender with some weird protein concoction that came out. Drink it and go to the gym. Oh man. <laughs> I don't know how I kept that down. Sometimes I didn't actually, but um, yeah. yeah. So that was that was the 
that was the secret recipe, magical recipe back then. Yeah. So thank God I had a teenager's metabolism, but yeah. that just it tasted all kinds of awful. Oh, yeah. so, but that was a sacrifice I was making at the time. Yeah, I, I, I remember trying the whole raw eggs thing too when I when I was probably about 15 years old, just starting. It's not rocky. And, yeah, just thinking, you know, this is a good idea. Let's let's drink some raw eggs and probably the most disgusting thing I've, I've ever yeah. had in my life. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, how many ways can we spell slimy? Which I still don't get. People try to drink those raw egg whites still. Yeah, yeah. And why not just them like, up yeah. and enjoy them? Yeah. Put some salsa yeah. on them, a little ketchup, yeah. a little chili Maybe ketchup. I, I just yeah. Anyway, that's another good one. What else, Brian? Coach Abel, Bronco wants to know if you can list all of your programs that are applicable on the Platinum Club. For the Platinum Club, um, geez, depends. Well, hard gainer solution. The, there's two in the actual Platinum Cup book for beginners and my own six-day um, Platinum Club workout for Physique After 50 is in there. Um, and then, of course, whatever I do on an in individual assessment basis, right? So yeah, I was going to say, it, I, it must really depend on the person. Yeah, too, I, just right? didn't, so. I just did an assessment on someone who was uh, you know, uh, over 50 who needed like a different type of protocol which I just tweak an existing protocol and make it fit you know mm -hmm. that's what uh, templates are for right like I write you a program yep. and then someone might come along a year from now who's 50 or whatever and I go in and do an assessment oh that old program of Andy's might work I go in tweak it make it fit someone who's of the over 50 demographic and, and take it from there mm -hmm. so uh, yeah very important to look at it that way um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of pro. Don't forget, you make the program fit the person. You don't make the the person fit the program, unless you're looking at a wide demographic, like AbsByAndy.com, and um, Great Glutes at Home that we released yeah. was meant to target a wide demographic that anyone can do it. And the Physique After Fifty book is a starting point for that. So that's a that's a good question. But hopefully, people understand the nature of individuality as well. What else, Brian? Uh, Naftali wants to know how alcohol affects the metabolism and physique. <laughs> Negatively. <laughs> it doesn't mean I don't like my wobbly pops, because I do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, people are going to have two or three drinks a night. Um, it's not good. when you're in super compensation, though, and, and you consume it all. All in one day as part of your refeed. Yeah, it's, it's different as opposed to just I, yeah. having that creates casual what, drinks. Yeah. yeah, creates what we call a buffer when you do it that yeah, way, right? Yeah. So, uh, but alcohol is technically a sugar, so the way it acts in your body, uh, it's hard to metabolize, mm -hmm. hard on the liver, of course. So um, now, I mean, that depends on how much you're drinking over how long a period of yeah. time. Cosmetically, no, you never, had, ever, you know, I've heard of fat loading, I've heard of carb loading, but I've never heard of alcohol loading. Uh, not not to look better, anyway. <laughs> maybe to feel better, yeah, yeah. or to wipe out your memory entirely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, I think people want it to be true. You know, a few years ago, the whole red wine thing, oh, and, yeah. with, yeah. you know, with uh, so resveratrol right. and, yeah. you know, the so good for me and this and that. Mm -hmm. Red it's, wine it's all is... lifestyle as a whole, I think. I mean, yeah, it's not, yeah. it's never just it's one not, thing. It's not why... Yeah, you're not going to get ripped on it being part of your diet. That's, yeah. that's for sure. I've never met anyone who could, so... Um, you know, now health-wise, yeah, I mean, a drink here and there. It's not going to impact yeah, your health in a negative way, probably. But the specific question was metabolism and, and physique. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's not going to yeah. be the first thing I would eliminate along with flour yeah. and sugar. Yeah. So, yeah, I get that question a lot, oh, can I still drink? And it's like, well, you can, but you're not going yeah. to get the results you want. But, yeah. yeah, flour, sugar, alcohol, first things to go if you really mm -hmm. want to make a change. Scott uh, Alexander has a comment here. Any tips for activating hard to hit body parts? For example, shoulders always fall first, fail first on chest, chest exercises regardless of weight used and attempts at uh, mind muscle connection. That sounds like an innervation problem to me. You're innervating in one plane of motion but not in another um, for that particular muscle group. So that would require program design. Yeah, proper uh, exercise sequencing, I would imagine. And yeah, yeah, because yeah. uh, those those two uh, workout muscles should work well together. Oh, big time! Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. the fact that they're not means that one is overtaking the other in terms of innervation. That can have a hundred different ways to solve it. Nothing that you can just sort of yeah, there's not like one one tip. It's not a trick. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
It would take a, a good uh, program design and more balanced training, I would imagine. Um, best way to do that would be make shoulder day come first before chest day, or within a workout, make shoulders come first before chest. And then they would be forced to come along with the chest movements as well, and they would build more innervation through that pattern. So that's a good question, though. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, Mike has contacted us. Coach, it's the first time watching you live. Just oh. found your videos a few days ago and already bought Cycle uh, Diet and Physique Over 50. Uh, Mike, uh, gotta give him credit, he's lost almost 100 pounds wow. and he thinks your products will help it continue. Wow, great. Is there a question there? Or no, I, if you can comment on it. Well, anytime someone achieves that kind of uh, monumental transformation yeah. as we say kudos um, let's hope it's sustainable and you keep it off and you do that through lifestyle Absolutely. all right you don't to do it through magic so I'm glad you found my stuff I'm glad you find it useful um, of those two books the cycle diet is also a course Mike I don't know if you mentioned you took the course or just read the book um, but yeah you got to have refeeds uh, too many times formerly overweight people have a real paranoia about yeah. about food and they end up in a different kind of trap so um, you gotta watch that so you read two of the, the good books you might want to try my books understanding metabolism as well and uh, my other book permanent weight loss you might want to try that book as well so uh, but yeah if you've lost a hundred pounds then I'm sure you're yeah, you know, use that as motivation to keep your training up and, and your, your diet strategy up and, and you know just goes to show you know sometimes as our cameraman said use the phrase you'll get there sometimes people like this is is proof of that you just keep going and you'll get there forget about the finish line just yeah, keep telling self line. you'll get there and just keep you know as they say uh, uh, you know head down and, and butt up and and charge forward but congrats that's amazing beautiful I'm glad you found us and I'm glad you find a benefit in that great uh, coach, if you had to pick one program for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? I wouldn't. That's not how my mind thinks. So I'd like to say I, I could, but you know, depending on what I'm doing at the time would have the majority of my, my bias. Right now the program I'm doing has a majority of my bias, but this is the way to go. But uh, in five or ten years, who knows what my biofeedback will be and what my limitations might be from aging yeah, yeah. and working no, out sure, and yeah. stuff like that but uh, I got a lot of good ones don't forget in my repertoire I've got like 700 programs so um, I've deleted about 300 of them now so there's not that many but um, so yeah it's just not a way my mind would think I would have to here's the thing if I had to use one program for the rest of my life I'd be violating my own principles because that's not how the principles work right I have to abide in what my biofeedback tells me maybe down the road six days a week might be too much uh, right now it's not but i also know how to tweak that six days so that i'm not overtraining and stuff at my age as well so it's a great question but it just it's a great question because it what it makes me reveal that it's not a way to look at things <coughs> there is no one magic program that's going to sustain you forever uh, no. you know um, a program works while you're working it but no program works for it <coughs> Oh, absolutely. I'd, I'd still be doing the, the original program you gave me. Uh, I, you know. And you've been through dozens yeah. of my programs, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and there'll be more to come as you age, right? That'll change Yeah, again, no, I, so. absolutely. A uh, great question, but a great question because it takes the real answer in a different direction, so good stuff. Scott, uh, Andrea has seen in your cycle diet that you mention NEAT a lot, capital N-E-A-T. There's also been quite a few studies confirming people who stay leaner and have a higher NEAT. What's your view on consciously trying to stay more active during the day? Yeah, I don't like getting obsessed about stuff like no, that. No, no, definitely not. Because, I mean, that's, yeah, that, I mean, if, if you're not, if, if you have like a desk job or something. And Which I do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, if you get was, stressed out about having to get up and... Yeah. walk around and that kind of thing was used to make a point it was used to probably back up something I was already saying about about more objectionable objectionable alternatives yeah but um, I don't like anything that can lead to obsession uh, number yeah. crunching macro yeah, yeah. crunching all this stuff that makes it harder and harder to people get away from the reason we sustain being lean all these years and Andy of course in the prime of his life me not so much 
but still it remains true, uh, is because we create a lifestyle that you don't have to obsess about. It just is what it is. So I don't like anything that translates into, okay, let me, let me obsess about this now. Uh, you, you know, for something, even breaking it down to as simple as people who want to weigh themselves every day. Like, what the frig is that about? Uh, not, in our, not in our lifestyle. <coughs> no. Do you even own a weight scale? Because I don't. I, I don't, know. No. So there you go. Neither of us even own a weight scale. Do the math. <laughs> Good point. What else? All right, folks. I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, my brain hurts doing a podcast and then coming in and doing Facebook Live. doesn't take much to make this old brain hurt. Um, yeah, so hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, if you like the show, uh, show us some thumbs up and some happy faces and all that stuff that Facebook likes. Uh, you can find us later on YouTube as well. Uh, where's what's your Facebook address again? It is uh, just just Andy Sinclair. Just search me, uh, search for me on there. You can find me at um, realandysinclairfitness.com and realandysinclair on Instagram. So all right, and absbyandy.com yeah, of course. And absbyandy.com. And don't forget the new product I released two days ago. Okay, for the ladies, great glutes at home for the ladies. Uh, get it now before prices go up. If you haven't got it yet, the reviews are already coming in pretty positive. And uh, as Mike always likes to remind me, we like to over-deliver. So um, that's a good motto to live by. So when people expect something of you, over-deliver. Yeah. So uh, that's what we do. So uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. And uh, in advance, write, in your, you know, write your questions down, your comments down, things you want us to know. Or talk about we'd be happy to do it so we covered a lot here hypervitaminosis uh, lessons from Las Vegas if you want to call it that um, and and other things that uh, fitness ex fitness people I wouldn't call them experts but people in the fitness industry should know but clearly don't um, and all the rest so uh, hopefully we'll see you all back next week uh, glad you're out there if you weren't it wouldn't make much sense for us to be here so see you next time